This is a meeting of the Fall River Commission on Disability for Thursday, August 8, 2019. Um, at the Government Center City Council Chamber, and the first order of business is a reading of the open meeting law statement, which will be read by Sergeant Mike. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Public input? We do have one. We have one. Can I use the mic? No, we have to pass it over to him. This one here? Can you I don't think it's on. Yeah, it should be. If not, I know how to turn it is that okay? We'll make oh. it okay. Can you get a little closer, Dan? There you I go. I don't know if that helps. Maybe not. Yes, but it used to be a while. Do you want to put them over here? Do you use this mic? Back in my old seat. Uh, <laughs> no, he's... Yeah, just put them... It's usually on this side. Yeah. Ah. Uh, now we're talking. Is it on? Yeah. Yep. Chairman Pasoe, members of the Disability Commission, Dan Robillard, 145 Old Second Street, Fall River. Before I begin my remarks this afternoon, I'd like to take about a 10 seconds to acknowledge the passing some months ago of former chairman of this commission, Thomas McCluskey. I learned of his passing uh, several weeks ago. It happened earlier this year. He served both this city and this commission admirably for a number of years. He was the second chairman of this commission. So I wish to uh, uh, comment on his passing this afternoon and send my condolences to his family. <clears throat> that said, uh, as far as public input, I wish to comment on two subjects this afternoon. The first is the event that was held in the middle of June, the bowling event that was sponsored by this commission. It was very well attended, it was very productive. I'd say we had between 30 and 50 people there with a good cross-section of disability, uh, among them uh, <clears throat> those who attended. And when I had the privilege of working to form this commission, back in 2003 up to 2006 uh, with then former mayor Edward M. Lambert Jr. and then city administrator Jim Smith. Uh, these are the types of events and the types of things that I envisioned beside being the main policy advisor for the city on all things disability. These types of events are exactly what the Disability Commission should be doing, should be spending its money on, and we should be doing more of it as much as we can. So it was a great event. I look forward to Awareness Day in September, <clears throat> but I also look forward to more community events, more networking, hopefully getting more people to realize after 12 years there is a commission here get different people's input, and allowing the more people we have at the table, the more people we have involved, the more issues that come to light, and the more things get done. And that should be a fundamental focus of this commission. <clears throat> Topic number two. I said this a month ago. This is not really a debate. It's my own personal opinion as a citizen. And I would ask that if anybody is going to challenge anything I say, that I would be given a chance to respond. I'm just expressing my own personal belief. <clears throat> While it's in a loud use, I do not believe spending $80,000 for two police cruises is the best use of commission money. I do not believe <clears throat> that the cruises will solely be used for the purpose of the Disability Commission. 
I, I, I just don't think that'll be the case. Now, let me be very clear as I am every time I speak about this. This is not any slight on the police department or the job they do. They do a good job. They've served this commission well. I just do not believe that spending $80,000 over four years is the best use of commission money. That's all. Secondly, the commission pays two officers $128,000 a year, approximately. I, I fully realize and fully know, as it's stated every time, that this does not cover all of the expense around these two officers. I just, the commission is paying for tickets and other expenses that we never funded before. Uh, there's many things that we pay for, and, and I just believe <clears throat> maybe one cruiser, although e even at one, I would still argue that this is a capital expense, it's a city expense, it's a department expense. It is not the best use of commission money, in my opinion. <laughs> Once again, uh, no slight on the police department, the two officers do the job that they are tasked to do uh, as they are hired by this commission to the tune of $128,000 uh, per year. But I just do not believe that is the best use of commission funds. So with that, I would strongly oppose the expenditure of $80,000 on two cruises over four years. Thank you very much. The next item is a roll call. Commissioner Chairman Dennis Paselli. Here. Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco. Here. Commissioner Elisa Silva. Here. Commissioner Sergeant Michael Hoare. Here. Commissioner Kathy Ann Rivera. Here. Attorney Gary Howayak and Commissioner Robert Way Ray are absent. Uh, next, uh, we need to have an approval of two sets of meetings. First, the meeting. I'm going to start with the meeting of May 23rd, 2019. I believe <clears throat> the proper way of doing it is that we have to lift it from the table. Oh. Am I right, Kathy? Mm -hmm. yes. So I make a motion that we lift the approval of the minutes for the meeting of May 23rd, 2019 from the table. Second. Okay. okay. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of May 23rd, 2019. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Um, next is the approval of the minutes for the meeting of June 13th, 2019. Do I hear a motion for that? Motion to approve the minutes for June 13th. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Um, okay, next we have under work group updates, ADA. Um, and I'm going to ask, I believe it's Brandon. Brandon Golden. Golden, Golnick to come join us at the table. He's representing Tammy. And he's representing the project manager for Brandon. Brandon. Just oh, I'm sorry. For facilities maintenance yeah. department. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Brandon Golnick. I'm the city grant writer. And I'm here today to give you an update on the ADA self evaluation and transition plan that the Institute for Human Centered Design in Boston is. Uh, currently working on for us. Um, I spoke with Tammy and she stated that Anna from uh, the Institute of, for Human Centered Design um, are still working on the reports and are planning to send the outdoor area and a few municipal building reports by the end of next week. Um, they've currently completed all of the voting facilities. Um, so we're looking forward to you know, receiving the rest of um, 
the rest of the reports for the city. Um, once those are done, they will give us information that we need to make uh, ADA improvements throughout cities and parks in the city of Harbor. Any questions for Mr. Golnick? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Question. So, uh, uh, can you tell us, I, I believe we need the self-assessment completed. Are we going to be completed in time to be able to apply for actual construction funding um, um, in conjunction with this plan? Yes. If, if the pl As long as we have the draft plan before the application due date, which is October 9th, we should be ready to roll. Um, and as long as I have the scope of work for the grant application, um, I think we'll be fine. It would be great to have a finalized version. It would make our proposal more competitive. However, I think, you know, just having the, uh, the information in the transition plan and in the self-evaluation um, will be enough for, for the purpose of this grant. Okay. And do we have any idea when the plan is going to be ready for submission? I mean, is there a possibility that we'll, it will be under review by that date? Um, according to Tammy, it should be under review by that date. However, we're not 100% certain because it depends um, on the contractor that's, you know, completing the plan for us. Okay. And then I guess my next question is, um, and you may not know this, Brandon, so can, okay. uh, feel free to defer to, uh, to Tammy, but um, we do have a lot of work to complete. I believe we were looking at a couple of projects that we wanted to apply for. Yep. So I was um, curious if we had started to make a decision as to what that first application would look like and what work we would be um, planning to undertake. Um, and I'll get that answered before I move on to my next question. Okay, so um, according to Chris Gallagher, mm -hmm. he wants to do the city chambers, the council chambers. Okay. Um, he has a good idea to make the council chambers handicapped accessible. I'm um, still waiting for those architectural renderings. Okay. Council chambers versus council hearing room? I'm pretty sure he said council chambers, but I don't, you know, I'm not 100% okay. on that, but I will get clarification. Okay. Yeah, I think, and I'm not certain either, so I wouldn't necessarily expect you to know. I know that we're evaluating that. There's a lot of concern regarding the hearing room downstairs, uh, which has no accessibility. This chamber at least has accessibility. I mean, we're not excited with the ramp that's here, and I'm sure it could be better, but at least we do have opportunity. Um, to allow um, physical uh, access to the facility, whereas downstairs we have no, we have no access um, for handicapped individuals. So um, that's that's good to know. I just uh, again would appreciate that once we start to uh, make a decision as to which project we move forward with, it might be helpful to come back and get the disability commission's input Absolutely. regarding the project, the scope, um, and um, hopefully we'll be able to get a letter of support from the commission so that when we submit our application, they'll know that we're um, in agreement with the, yep. the scope of work that's being proposed. So uh, I know, Mr. Chairman, we'll, we'll be having regular monthly meetings now, so we should be having a September meeting. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah so that no, will enable us. We take July off, so. Okay. Yeah, so that will enable us to weigh in and be part of that application process prior to, I'm, I'm sorry, Brandon, what was the deadline you said? We October 9th. October 9th. October 9th, okay. So that's that's good to know. We should be able to weigh in. So, um, And I guess I would just add at this point, and we don't have to discuss this now uh, since we don't have Tammy or um, Mr. Gallagher here, but um, if the commission has any strong opinions about projects that you think we need to undertake for government center mm -hmm. um, I think you should feel free to share those with Brandon and or the facilities folks uh, sooner rather than later we do have an opportunity I think to change the scope of the um, of the grant I know he's he has to, spoken with the mayor and also spoken with me about the priorities and again we identified them Pretty sure it's the, it's the hearing room, okay. uh, and that and it. I think the only reason it may not be the hearing room is it may be a matter of price and amount of money that's available. That that's going to be quite a project. But um, in any event, um, we felt that 
you know, we needed to have full handicapped accessibility because a lot of meetings are conducted down in that hearing room and we don't have the access for handicapped individuals. However, um, I would encourage my fellow commissioners if you have any strong opinions about alternative um, projects that you feel are important, um, then by all means, you know, let us know um, soon so that we can alter the scope uh, for the purposes of the submission. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a couple of questions. Oh, by the way, signage is uh, my uh, my project. Braille labels in this building is that part of the um, uh, part of the scope? I know that Mr. Gallagher is in the process of addressing that, so my, I'm thinking he may have already identified a funding source for that. Um, he did express to me that he was going to have the Braille signage done for the entire building and he was actually going to ask um, someone, I even suggested the chairman, <laughs> to um, kind of proof the signage um, to make sure that it's being done correctly and that it um, complies and conforms with the requirement. Um, so I know that project is well underway. I can't be certain that he may not be making this part of the grant application, but my um, understanding was that this was something that was moving ahead irrespective of the um, pending application. Uh, the other thing is, are these the ADA self-improvement grants that are now available or they'll be available August 1st? Is that the one? Because we all got some correspondence from uh, Jeff Dugan about the, this year's round of ADA improvement grants. Yes. Okay. Um, and finally, for me, from my, you know, from my, my vantage point, are we going to be able to see the report as commissioners um, when it's ready? And you may not know the answer to that, but I'm just curious. Absolutely. Um, you're talking about the, the report for the transition plan and the right. self-evaluation. Right. Yes, that will be made available to the Commission on Disabilities. Okay. I have a question. I don't know if Brandon can answer it. You know, the last time we had met with Tammy and it was Anna, right? Mm -hmm. They were going to go back to the department heads and try to get more information. I'm just wondering how that went. Like, mm -hmm. remember Tammy was? They were going to both go back because maybe the department heads really didn't understand what they were looking the for surveys. in the surveys. Yes. Yes. So yes. I don't know. I'm, I I was wondering how if that helped at all. If they were able to obtain more information from the department heads once mm -hmm. they um, sat with them and kind of explained exactly what we were looking for and that what was needed in that so I I haven't received any feedback okay. but I, I didn't ask curious. the question either yeah. so I, I, really I don't know if Brenda would be able to answer that but yeah. maybe Tammy would have I'm not sure but um. so what exactly what kind of information and what kind of input? The, a survey went out to yep. all department heads disability commission asking for information and there were questions on the survey okay our information was that the response was very low. So Tammy, in conjunction with the coordinator, was going to go one-on-one -on -one interviews with department heads to see if they could elicit better information to okay. help with the progression of the report. Okay. I'll check in for that. I'll check into that for yeah. you guys. I was just curious because yeah. I think we as a, as a group felt that maybe they didn't understand what we're looking for. Yep. Exactly. Especially for, I think, with the pox was the well, big there were one. Some of the we questions the way they were worded, they may have thought it didn't apply to them. That's right. Right. As opposed to thinking about the constituents that are right. using Correct. the, the exactly. services. Okay. That that was what my one question was since you were here. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Gomnik, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. <laughs> yes, sir. That, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you. I look forward to it. Policies? No updates at this time. Okay. The next item is uh, under finance. Um, uh, we, heard an, we heard a presentation on May 23rd from Sergeant Kevin Dolan, who I, I don't think he's here today. Is he is he? not. Okay. And it's not necessary, this is an action in a, a vote, uh, an action item on the um, Proposal for two police cruisers. 
Again, Mr. Chairman, I believe this item was tabled, so I'll make a motion to lift from the table in order to be discussed. Okay, do I hear a second to that? Second. Okay, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? You know, I probably should have asked this question way back, but do you, we do vote, right, to take an item off the table? That does go to a vote? Yes. Okay, good. Just to make sure I was doing the yes. right thing. Okay, so let's get a motion on the floor for discussion. Well, I believe uh, what we were waiting for were quotes for the cruises, which were not supplied the last time, and that was the main reason why we tabled this item mm -hmm. uh, in our packet today and email that we received. Uh, there is a quote uh, for the purchase of two police cruises. Uh, these are off the state contract, so from my understanding, it's the best price that they can get for these vehicles. So we were waiting for this. We've obtained it. I believe we've discussed our views on the pros and cons of this and some of the stipulations I think through myself and Chairwoman Viveris is that the sole use will be for handicapped parking details unless there's a declared emergency. I've smoked spoke at length to the chief several times regarding this. He assured me that that verbal contract will not be breached, that it would be ludicrous for him to breach that contract because the cruises are gonna last longer, be utilized by sole individuals. So rather than lasting three years, he says they may up upwards last up to 10 years. So you're talking a 10 year investment for two cruises. Uh, we also indicated that they would be marked somehow up to their discretion on whether they were HP1, HP2 as cruises designated for handicapped parking. And the recommendation by Chairwoman Viveris was to take it out of two different fiscal years so that it would not be a burden or a big bump into our budget. So. Um, was it two years or four years? Looks like four. It was four years? Okay. Well, the administration can work that out. Yeah. Uh, having been in that position before as administrative assistant, it's just setting up an account and, and working the numbers. So, like I said, that's my thoughts. We've discussed it. We've obtained the information we needed. I don't know if anyone else has any further discussion, but uh, I'm ready to vote. I have a questions. All right, so um, we're being asked to purchase these two police cruisers for a program that we vote for each year, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So my concern regarding that is um, in the past there has been some opposition to working with the police department. I myself don't disagree with it, but what would happen in the future, say two years from now, three years from now, if there is opposition and um, the majority agrees not to continue working with the police department? What's gonna happen with the police cruisers, the payment of it, all that? Is there, it doesn't seem like we touched upon that because nothing actually is set in stone. Okay, that's a good question. I'll, I'll start, I can address some of that. I can't speak to the historical uh, sentiment of the Disability Commission, um, being relatively new to the commission. Um, it was my understanding that the program has been very beneficial to the commission. The idea of having officers dedicated to the enforcement is not only good for the community because we need that enforcement. We need to preserve, you know, those parking spaces for the benefit of our disabled uh, community, um, and certainly the revenue is very is very good and helps us do the work that we do. So, um, I would assume that moving forward, that we would continue that program. But again, I'm not aware if there were any problems historically that might. One of my other commission members perhaps could weigh in on that, but um, uh, but having said that, that further supports, if you will, the concept that if we were to provide the funding over a four-year time frame, um, we would 
should we decide to terminate in year three, if we terminate the program, yeah. then the disbursement would not be made. So it's, it's not like we're going to be paying for four years' worth of cruises and then after two years not be utilizing the police officers. Because we are staging it out over four years, we're going to be making $20,000 payments per year, roughly. Yeah. Um, so that those payments are going to be made at the same time as we continue with the program. And the decision to continue with the program will, I would assume, trigger the payment of the next $20,000 because we pay, we, we vote annually. So mm -hmm. with the annual acceptance of the program's continuation, then that would be accompanied by the, you know, the vote to provide the one quarter um, amount for the cruise. So I, I think your concern is that those two, the program and the payment for the cruises are, are going to be running um, well, that and, that and if we terminate year five, then we've paid for cruisers that the department is going to continue to use and right. the program isn't going to continue. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Just my concern. Um, so just to go, f as I said, I, the, I would assume that the program will continue. I think everyone's been pleased with I it. I would but assume, again, but like I said, nothing's set absolutely. in stone, which is my concern. If it was something that we knew would continue mm -hmm. in the part, and I definitely don't disagree with working with the police department. It is our only source of revenue, but we can't predict who we will have on the commission mm -hmm. in the next two, three years. Right. We can't predict, you know, so I myself don't feel comfortable purchasing the vehicles for that sole reason. Okay. Could I? Could I ask you a question? Um, what if we did, wh what would be the, um, the problem with just going with one cruiser? And then see how that works out, and if there's a need to come back for a second one, if we started with one cruiser? Perhaps, uh Commissioner Mike could answer this further, but I believe there are two the, officers that are using... There are two yeah. independent, dedicated officers that are assigned to the disability or handicap detail. If both are working at the same time, which I hate to assume, but majority of the time, they, from my understanding, they would be working together. One would have the dedicated car that we purchased, and the other one, as we heard from Sergeant Dolan, may be in a situation where he would have to beg, borrow, and steal from another unit or division in order to fulfill his obligation uh, in the handicapped parking detail. He seems to think there is a need for two. Having been in that position before, as the commander of traffic, I can see his need. And, uh, you know, it's up to the will of the commission. You want to try one, one doesn't work, go for two. But keep in mind, the longer you wait, the more the price goes up. Mm -hmm. Especially in a state contract. They always circulate every year, correct, correct. Kathy? Yeah. Right? New correct. bids come out. Mm -hmm. And, you know. I, um, I, I didn't see in the materials and, 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 and I had no trouble reading them. They were a PDF um, uh, and they were text. There was no graphics or anything like that. But I didn't see anything in the materials, um, you know, that would indicate separate markings, unless I'm mistaken, if, and the rest of the commissioners can correct me. No, there is nothing see there. About HP one and HP two. That would be applied. Like that, that would be applied by the police department, and they have a vendor. I'm not going to mention the vendor, but they have a vendor that they utilize to decal the cruises. So that would be an after market type situation. And to that point, I mean, I think commission makes a decision that they want to support that initiative. I don't know why the markings couldn't actually say um, disability commission on them, HB1 disability commission um, vehicle, just to acknowledge the fact that the disability commission has made the investment and 
the community will see some of the product of the work that we do and the, the funding that we secure. So, I mean, we could check with the um, with the chief on that, but I don't know why, you know, if we have that ability, it would also be a visual reminder to the community that this is, this is part of what they support. We have people that get tickets and not happy having to pay those tickets, so if they're reminded that, you know, their funds are being utilized to um, provide services to the, you know, disability community, I think that's always a good thing. So. Um, Sergeant Moore. Yes. My understanding from the last meeting that we had that Sergeant Dolan was at was that the two police officers were not on at the same time. And that the, the reason why they wanted the two crews is because there's a lapse in time. From when one it comes off, when one is, because it, it was like now, an now that you because mentioned that, one is working a day shift. And one's working so second. Right? Yeah, but there is an it, overlap. There's an overlap. And because that was one of the questions is what is the purpose of two vehicles mm -hmm. when they're on it? different shifts like that was my understanding because we wanted someone out there as much time as, as much we can as we can so um cause i think that was definitely one so of the it questions overlap. It, it was because there's an there's a, an hour or so overlap which was the reason for the second cruiser um or they could change um the time i guess so if one yeah i don't know what time they get off but um there'd be a lapse of somebody going out so um mm -hmm. But that was my understanding from that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But um, that was my only. Anyone have any more questions? OK, are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. I think okay. so. I need, we need a motion, folks. There's no motion on the floor yet. Mr. Chairman, I would make the motion that we um, support the police department's request for the Disability Commission to purchase two cruises for the exclusive use of the offices assigned to the Handicap uh, Parking Enforcement and that the payments uh, be made to the department um, annually representing 25 percent each year of the cost of the two vehicles that are being purchased and that's over a period of four years over a period of four right. years yes so 25 percent in each of the next four years i second that okay um do we want to roll call? We yeah do we have any, any further discussion i do i just, I just have Go a ahead. question yeah, sure. um Going back to Lisa's question and concern, is there anything, um, Commissioner Veras, that we put together in an agreement in some sort of, I wouldn't call it a contract, an agreement that basically states that if the commissioner commission decides not to fund the handicap, the, mm -hmm. the program, that the police department then is going to assume the remaining payment. I, I don't know how you would sure. word that, but does that, because that's your main concern, is that if we should ever decide not to continue funding that, um, right, but I still I still have issue with on year five. Yeah, those vehicles are still in excellent condition. Yeah, we've paid for it, but we're not using it, and it's not really going to continue to help out the disability, the disabled population because we're not using it now to generate the revenue yeah. to help those with disabilities. Correct. That's my only issue. Correct me if I'm wrong. Whether we have the police detail program or not, 22G is still in effect. The police officers still have to enforce disability parking. Mm -hmm. And the funds still go into the disability right. commission that's account. True. Is that correct? I'm, correct. I'm pretty sure that's, that's, correct. that's how it correct. works. That's correct. So no matter what, the police department is still out enforcing mm -hmm. compliance except that we have decided as a commission to dedicate, dedicate two, two offices. offices to just look right. for that right. as opposed right. to which so I'm totally yeah. fine with it's just I just feel like we should just be, be doing more for those that are disabled and I feel like on year five we've spent ninety thousand dollars for vehicles and yeah we're still getting that that 
revenue from the tickets, but it's just not directly, the money just went to vehicles, in my opinion, at, at the end of all things. If it was something that we knew was set in stone, then maybe I'd feel differently, but like I said, it's like asking us, it's like asking me to pay for my daughter's education in advance, not knowing that I'm gonna to continue to wanna to keep her in the same school. There's no guarantee. That's the only issue I have. Well, but I think the chairman's point was there will always be Funds police deposit. enforcement. Yeah, right. I guess so. That. Right. That yeah. will continue irrespective of whether the commissioner, de the commission decides that they want to have dedicated yep. police officers mm -hmm. doing I right. So that. There, there'll always be a benefit to right. you know what's happening there. Um, but um, and I and I think it's just important to know, and I and I know we had a lot of conversation on this, but it is important to note that I think if the program doesn't continue, it's going to be because the commission has made a decision right. not to continue the program. Right. Yeah. And because of the revenue that we're generating, I would just respectfully suggest that the probability that the program would be discontinued would be um, somewhat unlikely. But. You're right. Who you can don't know. speak I to know. future, I future yeah, I just, numbers? It's, no. it's like a gambling yeah. game. I, 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 think we've, I think we've got a lot of good things planned. Um, we've had a very successful Disability Awareness Day. We've got plans to uh, do more socializing with the disability community. And I think this partnership allows that to happen. Um, to say nothing about other things. Uh, um, I know that next month the director of special ed will be coming to ask for our participation in something and and we want to be able to do that because that kind of thing is what we've always been struggling for and that is impact. Impact, how do we impact the disability community? And I see this commission starting to do that and that's exciting. And the only way that's going to continue is if we continue not only the partnership that we have, but even strengthen it in some cases, because that that allows them to do the best job they can to both educate and enforce disability parking laws. And on the other hand, it allows us to do things that we need to do, including to help out with ADA compliance. So that, that's just something to keep in mind, I guess. Any other questions? Or? I guess my last point is that if we as a commission do decide to approve this, um, will there be some sort of agreement that is put together that outlines the expectations and you know, just, you know, the payment, like just everything so that way it's in writing, it's clear that it is our expectation that those two cruises would be just used for the sole purpose of those two police, or, you know, however it is that we want to have mm -hmm. outlined. So. It's not just a verbal agreement, is that it's actually yeah. outlined. I'm sure the yeah. chief would be yeah. you know, agreeable just, to that. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Right? I mean, that way yeah. everyone's yeah. covered. I'd like to see that formally in the form of an amendment. Because I think the more that, I think that's a good point. I, I'm not comfortable with just verbal contracts. Yep. I need yeah. to see it in writing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the that's truth? Good. I, I would be very happy, Mr. Chairman, to uh, amend my motion to say that um, the arrangement should be reduced to writing and that the payments would continue um, for the four-year duration provided that the arrangement with the police department continued during that same time frame. So and I think the Disability Commission should get some mention on it too. Right? I agree. Absolutely. However that happens, so right. you know, well, we can add that to the, whether it's to uh, the mix. Whether it's labeling a cruiser or yeah. press something, mm -hmm. press yeah. conference, yeah. I'm sure the yeah. chief would be more than happy to do it. <clears throat> we'll even put, we'll put you behind the wheel, Dennis. Yeah, I think we should do a roll call. Yeah, we should do a roll call. Roll call of We're going to do a yeah. roll call, yeah. folks. Good. All right, good. So there would be a second to the amended motion. A second the amendment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. As amended. Um, we don't need a roll call on the amendment, so let's we'll do a voice vote on the well, amendment. Te what, technically, we? Mr. Chairman, we yeah, we, yes. we need okay. a vote right, on sorry. the amendment, <laughs> and then we'll need a vote on oh, the 
entire thing. Unless I withdraw my okay. motion. Um, I'll <clears throat> withdraw my motion. You want to withdraw your second, and I'll yep. make a new motion. Okay. All okay. right, why don't we do it that way? All right. Yep. Okay, that's good. So um, the motion would be that um, the Disability Commission vote um, to approve the request of the Fall River Police Department uh, to assist in the purchase of two police vehicles to be used exclusively for uh, handicap parking enforcement and that um, those payments, uh, the cost for those two cruisers um, would be divided amongst a four-year uh, payment and each of the payments would be made annually that there shall be an agreement between the Disability Commission and the Police Department in writing outlining um, the terms of the payment and that Disability Commission vehicles be marked as um, handicap parking enforcement vehicles. Second to the motion? I'll second. Okay. I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. Am I allowed to ask for that or is somebody else to ask for a roll no, call vote? No, you can ask. Okay, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote. All right. Commission Chairman Dennis Baselli? Yes. Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? No, slowly, for, slowly because I can't agree to pay for something up front not knowing that the program is going to continue. Not that I don't support the police department in any way. Totally agree with it. Solely just for that reason. Commissioner Sergeant Michael Hort? Yes. Commissioner Kathy Ann Viveros. Yes. Motion passes. Second item under finance is the tip line, which I've not heard any more on this. I'm not even sure. Well, um, Sergeant, have you heard anything on the tip line? No, I have not. Okay. I guess basically we were looking for information on, they wanted to set it up in the police department. Okay. But we waiting for information on, right. of course, number one, who's going to pay or if there is a cost. And number two, if the police department has enough phone lines in there to accommodate it. And Should we table this for another I one? would table it again, waiting okay. for a response either from okay. Sergeant Dolan or the administration on whether this can be set up. Okay. Um, Do I make a motion to table? Oh, okay. Do I hear a second to table? Before there's a second, oh. because then I won't be able to talk. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm just reviewing the proposal that was made. Uh, and let me say at the outset, I don't know if there's an urgency. If no. My commissioners would prefer to table, but it does say that Sergeant Dolan believes there would be little to no expense in setting up a dedicated tip mm -hmm. line. I'm assuming that he yes. had spoken to the chief and determined that logistically there would be no problems with it. Mm -hmm. Certainly it's up to the department to figure out how to implement it. That's not our function. Right. I think what they're looking for, since there is no expense and, and we're not going to commit any funding for it, just um, the authority to I do it. I think we're basically just giving them the authority to set it up. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> look who's Perfect around. timing. Yeah. Sergeant, Sergeant Dolan's just showing up. I'm sorry. Mm. Would you believe I thought it was at 4 o'clock? The traffic... Uh, so then you're early. <laughs> traffic yeah. committee meetings at 4 o'clock. I apologize. Right. Okay. So, Sergeant, we were just discussing the fact that the tips line... Um, we've already moved on from the cruises. Actually, uh, we didn't have a quorum. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I was going to say... You Which one of us don't matter? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we were just discussing the tips line, uh, the tip line, and based on the documentation that we have, it would appear that there would be no cost or little to no expense, but that that would not be something that this commission would be expected to absorb in any event. And we presume you've worked it out with the chief as to the logistics of how this would happen. Um, well, I want to. Uh, I wanted to get it approved first. And I mean, okay. I, even even working it out, I know it's such a simple thing in today's day and age to have a telephone number attached where we can have someone call and look into it. The reason I presented it to the board in the first place was just basically for permission because it's attached to the Disability Commission. Okay. 
Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so we really don't, we just need to vote to support it. Is that, is that my understanding? Authorize? Uh, yeah. Authorize. I mean, literally, it's probably a, a dollar a month. I don't think uh, anyone would have trouble absorbing it. Yeah. Okay. So we have to lift from the table? Yeah, make a motion oh, yep. to lift from the table the uh, tip line, uh, establishing a tip line. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, wait, you don't discuss lifting from the table. Those in favor of lifting from the table? Indicate. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Now, I think we need a... Uh, a motion to authorize? Is that yeah. what we're yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so we need, somebody needs to make a motion to authorize the establishment of a tips line. It would be left up to the department, I guess. Um, I would make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Motion passed. Thank you. Um, uh, Sergeant, I will be in touch with you on the first vote. We adopted, the motion did pass for the two police cruisers. Awesome, thank you so very much. I will much. be communicating that. Um, and um, so the next item is um, Disability Awareness Day, which will be taking place on Saturday, September 28th, 2019. Um, and plans are proceeding. Summer is kind of um, slow for getting responses, but we have heard responses. I've heard from a couple myself and Lisa. Um, how are things it, it, overall? Good. I sent out the email this week um, to all the vendors that participated last year and then a few more that were interested after the event that wanted to um, participate. Um, so in the last couple days I already have eight vendors that are interested. Oh, wow. A lot got bounced back because people are still on vacation and stuff yeah. like that. So I, I know that will definitely increase. Did the Audible Local Ledger respond? Because they're going to Is that the Perkins? Uh, Perkins Library. They did. They did, but not okay. the Audible Ledger. Okay, no, Audible is, they told me, so they responded. They're oh, coming. okay, forward me all their information. Okay. I'll add that. That's good. Okay, so. That's good. So we're nine. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully we can fit now. We had 15, I believe, in half of the gym last year. Oh, so okay. we have more, if we need to expand, we have more than enough room. Um. I've contacted the princesses already, so they're going to get back to me because that was a big hit. Yeah. Um, Kids on the Block, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that yep, puppet show. I am. Great, great puppet show for children to educate them on disabilities. They lost their funding. So oh, no. I don't know what's going to happen with them. I don't know what rights they have for you know individuals who want to pay for their show privately. Right. Um, so I've reached out to them to see if they would still be able to do that for a cost because... Do you know it's how such much a great program. Would, what is it? Do you know how much they would need? I have no idea. They're part of the ARC, right? Yeah. 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 I was disappointed. Well, hopefully, they'll, hopefully the ARC is going to continue to fund the program, even though they don't have the funding from um, the United Way. Because I think that's where they got their funding from, was from the United I Way. I, I believe so. As of right now, they, they as of like a couple months ago, ago, they said they couldn't even take the event because there's no funding for it. It's been cut. Well, we just delivered today to this uh, um, in Debbie's car <laughs> the um, t shirts, the boxes from last year. So there is stuff left over from last year. But we are looking for an allocation of funds. I don't know if um, you have a suggestion as to last year we allocated 6000 Yeah. So do we remember what we We did not use that entirely we, we do have them. some additional costs if we, we didn't have an interpreter last year right um we didn't pay the princesses they volunteered don't yeah. know if that's going to happen again okay um if we get the kids on the block we don't know what the price is going to be for that so there's a lot of up in the airs on 
what we would still need to pay for. Um, I think we do need to purchase some more t-shirts. I have to take a look at what we have, but I think okay. we ran out of the littler sizes because we did have quite a few kids. Um, so I know we would need to purchase a few more shirts. Um, it's just can a... Make, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, and then somebody else needs to make motions because I, I can't do that. But if we, if we allocated the same amount as last year, would that... <coughs> Would that um, would that be okay, or, or would you need more than that? Definitely not more than that. Okay. I highly doubt we'll even use that. And we didn't, but spend, it's, and we didn't even spend it all last year. No, either, so that no. Be okay. mm -hmm. So I make a motion to allocate up to six thousand dollars for the Disability Awareness Day, September twenty eighth, twenty nineteen. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. And uh, under outreach, I'm going to ask Lisa to report on um, on the um, the social, the um, uh, the bowling and pizza social that was held at Westport. Um, is it the Westport bowling alley? Holiday lanes. Uh, on, June, on June 15th. Uh, yeah, so I was really, really happy to be a part of this. Um, it was such a good event. It, we had such a great turnout. I think it, I think it was like 35 or 36 participants. We had such a diverse population in terms of like disability. We had, you know, representation from the deaf, hard of hearing community. We had an individual who was blind that came with his seeing eye dog. <coughs> Um, we had um, intellectual disabilities, um, autism, and it, it was just great because, like Dennis had mentioned in the past, there's not a lot of um, opportunities for the disabled community to come together and network, and it was great to see, you know, parents who, you know, had a child with a particular disability meeting someone with a similar disability and their parents and talking about you know how is school going for them and it, it was just great to see like that ne networking because that really helps you know individuals learn what's out there and you know help each other out um, it was also disheartening to find out that not many people um, knew about the disability commission um, didn't know that we had events like this and stuff like that. So it was really good to be able to get the word out on what we do and how we're here to support the, you know, disabled community and stuff like that. So it was, it was a really, really, really nice event to be a part of. Thank you for the work you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you Thank know, you. this is, this is, um, this really is well within what we're supposed to do besides besides policy recommendations. This really does fall within the scope of 22G. Every time a question of, of that kind comes up, I'm always bothering the Mass Office on Disability. I'm always bothering Jeff Dugan. Does this fall within our purview? Is this not within our purview? I think sometimes he gets tired of hearing from me, but, <laughs> but I, I always, I, I would never personally, you know, it, I, I would never let anything that doesn't fall within our purview happen, but this, this really does, and I, I get a little tired when I've noticed since coming back here <clears throat> 10 years ago from Framingham that th th there's nothing down here. Boston has um, partners for people with disabilities. I was a big brother to a blind person um, when I worked in Framingham. Um, there's just not that, there's just not that support network down here at all. So I, I really commend Lisa for doing, for coordinating this, and, um, and, I, and I'd like to see us do a little more of that. I mean, between Disability Awareness Day, the schedule does get full, but, but I don't ever want people to worry about whether this falls within our purview or not, because it does. So um, that's my take. I would just add, I think it, is, it was an excellent activity, um, Disability Commission last year. I think the more we can engage the community in our activity, it not only helps them to understand what we do and, 
and that we exist on mm -hmm. their behalf, but also, mm -hmm. again, the networking is huge. It should oh, never absolutely. be underestimated. So, um, and I would yeah. suggest that if we have an ability to commit to an event or two prior to the disability awareness, I mean, we could start a calendar of sorts. You know, when people, when they're at one event, to be able to say to them when the next event is going to be. Mm -hmm. Right. I took and, a mailing list. Yeah, so that's <laughs> So good. I could put them on for disability yeah. awareness. So I had a that's, sheet, that's they signed excellent. in, Just, they put their email right. on it. Let's so I'll definitely reach out still. to them. And if we decided we were going to have some sort of another bowling mm -hmm. activity, as an example, um, let everybody know. You know, the more you can get the information out, I think it's good. So as we, as we get more matured in our event planning, we'll be able to let people know in advance so they can plan and mm -hmm. you know be available. I remember last year, that was the one, somewhat unfortunate piece of the disability, which you had no way of knowing. Disability Awareness Day. There was another fair going on right. at one of the schools. Only the one thing was happening. Right. Like Harvest Fifth. Festival. Yeah. Not this year. Not so this we year. were kind of. But to that point, the more. That's why we bumped it to September. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can. Skills was having a walkathon too that, that day. And I yeah. think they yeah. had the food truck festival, but it rained, so they canceled <laughs> that. Right. Yeah. But to the extent we can get uh, start to build a calendar so yeah. people know in advance when we're having an event, I don't think the other community groups want to conflict. Right. But if you don't, if you're yeah. not aware, then you know that's when it happens. So I think this was great, and I see it getting uh, better from here. So. Well, I can tell you that Lisa sent the email. The first email back uh, blast went out quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, just to sort of a save the date kind of thing. So I know that, you know, it, it went out very early. Yeah. Um, I mean, good participation. And, yeah. and, it, and in my thank you notes to people, um, I did say that we'll be doing this again next year. You know, well, when I wrote this last year, that we'll be doing this again next year, so. <laughs> Old business. Um, I just, want people to know that um, a couple of things. I participated in the what they call the advanced training. You had to have gone through the two days of community access monitor to go training to go through the advanced. The advanced was held at Skills Southeast Center for Independent Living on July 23rd. Um, if this, I hope it's not another 12 years <laughs> before it comes back here. Um, but if it comes in a, like Attleboro or something like that, um, I really, really encourage commissioners to take advantage because this really is uh, not only gives you the rundown of what the, the laws are, but the tools as to how to assess a building for accessibility. Um, you know, so it, it, it's really, um, it's, it's really, a, I think, one of the best programs that the Massachusetts Office on Disability offers, and they do a very good job with it. So um, I'll be happy to pass around the PowerPoint <laughs> from that day. Yeah. Um, so, um, and finally, new business. Um, how do I introduce this? I. I put under the new business um, eliminating the finance subcommittee, and let me tell you why I put it on here for our discussion and possible vote. Um, there was confusion between, um, and also I was getting confused between minutes and agendas. Um, between the two, I know the subcommittee started right before, and then they went into the full commission. So it was suggested that we we just do away altogether since we're all members, since we all are members of the finance subcommittee, that we just do away with it altogether and, and have, um, whenever there's a proposal, we keep the item finance, which is on the agenda, uh, and under that item, if a um, person came to us or groups came to us with proposals, we hear the proposals, <clears throat> if we're ready to vote on it that day, we can. If we're not ready, if we need more time to study or, or look into situations, then we table, it, table the vote till the next meeting. But it just became too confusing. Yeah. So 
I, I want it, rather than just doing away with it clandestinely without saying anything, I, I want to be clean about it, discuss it, vote on it, um, and that way there we're, we're well within the open meeting laws and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's, that's why it's on the agenda. Um, so I don't know if you want to make a motion to eliminate the finance subcommittee and get it on the floor for discussion um, and take it from there. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I, I'm in agreement that I, I think we all serve on the finance committee. We can just anyway. simply add items to our agenda. My, I guess my only question is I'm not certain how the finance subcommittee was originally formed. If it's part of bylaws or some sort of articles of organization. We don't have bylaws. We don't anymore. have that. No, so. we, we follow the, the 22. Oh. We follow the 8J, whatever, and we follow that. That's what we follow. So there really isn't any bylaws. So it's as simple as a vote yeah. to eliminate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I'm, then I'm comfortable with it. I, I don't see the necessity. And I would support a motion. I think at one time, Kathy, we weren't all part of the finance subcommittee. So there was like only maybe two or three members right. that were meeting, like like they are with the outreach and the policy. Um, policy. Yeah. So, um, but now we're all part of the finance mm. subcommittee. So, I think if we have it as an agenda item, under which we always have finance, and whoever needs to come and either present to us or we have stuff to talk about, then it's just embedded within yeah. our. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. completely. Right. So, um, so long as we're legally allowed to yep. do it and authorize, yeah. I have no problem. With so we, we operate under 8J, which is the state, you know, if anybody um, needs a copy of that, we can get it to people just to, you know, transparency and all. So I'll second the motion to eliminate the finance subcommittee. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and I believe the next meeting is on Thursday. September 12th. September 12th. Um, so, so the next item is a motion to adjourn. Before we get to that, Dennis, oh, what's on I'm the sorry. agenda for the 12th? What topics? Um, One of them, is that when we're doing the voting for um, offices? Is it at that Yes, meeting? yes. So that needs to be an agenda that's, item? That's, that's wow. the agenda Seems item. Like we just yes, that. we're voting for officers. So that's so an agenda item? That's the agenda item person. Do you have anything else? <coughs> not now, Any not speakers? Yet. Anything? No, no okay. guests. So the only thing that we have that we did definitely need to have is the um, election of officers. Okay. All right. Thank you, Debbie. I'm you sorry. Are, well, I thought it was in August, and I remember we moved no, to no, September. No, no, no. We moved so. to September. All right. So yeah. then I'm. So if that's it, I make and a motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, Second. Second. <laughs> Those in favor. Aye. Those opposed. We're adjourned. That's the shortest meeting.